So the three parts that come with your projector, you're gonna see your remote, you're gonna see a battery charger, and then you're gonna see this box that's attached to your board with magnets. If you open the box up, you'll notice that there's these pens in their box, and there's a blue pen and an orange pen. So you're gonna need those pens to work with the board in an interactive way. The pens come with various different tip styles. Some are hard plastic, some are felt. I think it comes with the felt as kind of the default tips, but you can unscrew those and put different tips on there. The pens are powered by a AA battery and you can charge them in the charger. They last a long time. Typically, they'll last you a few months before you need to charge them again. The remote is kind of like your standard remote. We're gonna get into more features of the remote as we learn about the projector and what all the buttons mean. As you're gonna see as we go through this, it's nice to have two different pens because you can use them for different colors to draw on the screen. So that just wraps it up for this part that talks about the accessories that go with your projector. To power on the projector, you're gonna use this blue button right here on the remote. After powering on the projector, you're gonna see this welcome screen, and this is important because it gives you a lot of information about what input you're using. It gives you information about the projector itself, and this address right here is gonna be really important. So you can actually, there's two pens that come with this. We said that there's a blue and an orange, and that's just designated by this little color here that's on the end of it. And I'll bring you in a little closer to one of these pens. So here's what the pen looks like, and there's a button. If you press the button, you should see a blue light come on. That blue light just tells you that it has plenty of battery life. And it also, this button can also function as a right click button, um, but you don't need to use it to turn the pen on and off. The pen will kind of turn itself on as soon as it senses it's near the board and underneath the projector, and it will also turn itself off. And the battery life actually lasts a long time. Uh, I went months and months without recharging the batteries last year and didn't have any issues. So we're gonna take a look at the computer screen next. So on your laptop, you're gonna to wanna to look for the easy interactive icon. And there's a picture of a pen with a rainbow coming out of the end of it. So you wanna double click that, and it should open this easy interactive tools. Next, you wanna click where it says other applications. And you're gonna get this box that pops up. It says, unable to search for projectors due to firewall. So what you wanna do here, it says, do you wanna disable the firewall? You always wanna hit no. And now you get a screen asking you to do either an automatic search or a manual search, and it wants you to try to find the projector. So the easiest way to do that is you click on manual search, and then up here, you're gonna to wanna to put the number of the projector at this point. So if you look at the screen, we can see that our number is that IP address down there. It says 010.001 and so on. So to shorten that, we're just gonna make it 10.1.2.15. So now in my box here, I'm gonna type that 10.1.2.15 and I'm gonna ask the computer to search for that. And then it pops up and it says it found it. There it is right there. I'm gonna click that box. Now I'm gonna click this box. It says it's on standby, that means it's ready. I click that box and then I hit join. And then it says it's connecting to the projector. So once you hit that join button, you're gonna have a toolbar that pops up. And that toolbar has a couple different functions on it right there that a lot of them you don't really need to use right now. If you wanna leave or close out, you can do that. You see as I move closer with the pen, some things pop up on the screen. And especially over here, you'll see this, these arrows pop up. And if you click on one of those arrows just by pushing it, and this actually acts as a mouse. When you push it, you'll feel it go in a little bit and that acts as a, as a click. So I click on there and then I have this drawing toolbar that pops up. So as you hover over it, you'll see different functions. For example, if I hit this marker right here and hit this little arrow that's next to the marker, I have some color choices here. So if I choose red, and I choose maybe this size line in red, then I can start drawing in red, right, like that. Okay, if I wanna undo that, I just hit this back arrow right here, and that will undo it. Um, also, if I, if I do more on there and I have other annotations, and I wanna get rid of the entire screen, you could use an eraser. That's this one right here. 
And if I click that eraser, you have different sizes, a small one or a thick one. You can erase like that, or you could choose to erase the entire screen by choosing this one right here. And that will say, do you want to delete all your annotations? Yes. That's a quick way to get going. So the other one I want to mention is the mouse. So if you click the mouse, then you'll be able to use this just like you would on your computer screen. You'll be able to open up different functions. If I want, let's say, open up a Chrome, I could click on there and it will open up a new web browser page for me. And then I can go to somewhere. If I'm in a lesson talking about something and we want to look something up, you could click here. And how do you type? Down here, you'll find there's a keyboard, a touch keyboard. I can click that. And now I'm able to type in there in the search dialog box, mountains. And then I hit go. I can close the dialog box. And now I have some, some pictures here. You can also open tabs. You could access files that you have saved on your computer. All of that is going to be just like you would be doing on your computer screen, but now you're going to be using the pen to do that. For example, I opened up right here my desktop, and I can look up the desktop. Here's, here's things I have saved on my desktop right here. I can take a look at some of the things in my Z drive, for example, um, things I'm working on for some of my classes. You could take a look at those open folders, pictures that you have that you want to show, past projects of a balloon car, for example. I could double click on that and we can see this picture of a balloon car. Once that's up there, if you wanted to do any kind of annotations, you could click on the marker options here and then, or the pen options, and then you could talk about different features with this drawing. You might notice if I don't draw for a while, the toolbars disappear. So all I have to do is bring the pen back closer and they should pop up again. And if I want this toolbar on the other side, all I have to do is walk over to the other side and I click on the arrow here and the toolbar will move to the other side. So if I do that, and sometimes you may have to click, there may be a delay, but if I click on the other side, now I have the toolbar here, I can choose the color I want to use to annotate. Um, let's say I want to do red this time, and we're going to say with this that this would be the action for the car, the arrow going backwards is the action. And then this car will move in this direction, equal and opposite, Newton's third law and this would be the reaction. So that's just an example of how you can pull up a picture that's in your files on your computer. You can have it up here on the screen. You can discuss it with the class. You can annotate it. You can have the kids come up and annotate, use the pen. The pen's very easy to use to be able to write with. It doesn't feel that much different than writing with a regular marker. And then what you could do if you wanted to at the bottom you could save this picture. So you could take a picture of what you did and you could save it. You could also print it out. So there's some options there at the bottom and we'll get more into that in some other detailed videos in the future. But hopefully that this video kind of gets you started and gets you familiar with some of the basic functions of using this. Uh, contact me if you have any more questions and I can work with you in detail to try to figure out some of those issues. There are sometimes things that come up that I'm not familiar with and we might have to research together. Okay, so that'll wrap up this kind of introduction part of this video. Hope that was helpful and I'll see you on the next video.